Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Groundhopper Soccer Guides. My name is Paul Gerald, and today we got another one of our informational videos. Uh, today is going to be all about the structure of world football or soccer. So what is FIFA? What is UEFA? What is the Club World Cup? All of these things uh, we're going to get into how the game is organized all around the world. Previous videos, I did one right here about the leagues and cups within England. So what's the Premier League, the Football League? Uh, what is the League Cup? Up, uh, what is non-league football, etc., uh, and what's the FA Cup? Speaking of which, there's the FA Cup, my tinfoil FA Cup, and here is a video explaining all about what is the FA Cup. Uh, and then the other informational video that we did uh, is all about promotion and relegation. So how are all those leagues connected by teams moving up and down based on how they did each season? That's right here, promotion and relegation in English football. How does it work? But for this week, uh, we are going to talk all about the structure of world football and try to help you through some of those weird abbreviations and uh, some of the competitions that you might hear about all over the world. So let's get into it, the structure of world soccer. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the world of football. Get it? World of football. So uh, we're going to go kind of fast here. So uh, if you need to replay anything, you can just back it up. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and we will get right to them. We're going to start by talking about FIFA, the Federation of International Football Associations, and uh, they are the governing body of world football. And by the way, not just football, but also futsal uh, and beach football. <laughs> Uh, and uh, for men's and women's, just for the record, they run the whole show. They don't, by the way, make up the rules of the game. That is handled by the International Football Association Board because the world needed another shadowy organization uh, with a terrible, boring logo. So what FIFA does? What FIFA does is they run international competitions like World Cups for women, men, uh, and all different ages, the under-23s, the under-19s, etc. They also run a Club World Cup that we'll talk about a little bit later. They run an E-World Cup. Yes, humans actually gather to watch other humans play video games. And when they do, FIFA is there. They also run a world ranking system, which... Literally no one understands. Um, you need a PhD at least. All I know is that if you look at the top 10 in the world right now, according to FIFA, um, Belgium is number one and England is number four. If anybody believes that Belgium is the first uh, best team in the world, then I'd like to meet that person. On the other hand, give it up for Belgium because they did win the Olympics in 1920. Now, there's one way in which FIFA has been a world innovator in sports, and that is that they pretty much came up with, back in the 50s and 60s, the idea of official sponsors or official partners. So these are the FIFA partners and the World Cup partners. As you can see, major brands, this leads to major money. Officially, FIFA is a nonprofit organization, which is somewhat comical uh, because their 2018 revenue was $4.6 billion. Now, with all of that money has come a certain amount of corruption. FIFA is basically an international crime syndicate that happens to also run football. Um, you might say they are for the game, for the world, eh, for the money. For example, uh, something like uh, a dozen or more of their executives were uh, arrested and uh, convicted of various bribery and money laundering and God only knows what uh, when the FBI came descending down upon them back in 2015. Mostly this had to do with awarding the 2022 World Cup to that football mad nation of Qatar, which uh, some people thought maybe there was some bribery involved. There kind of was. Uh, on the other hand, Qatar is building some kick-ass stadiums, so uh, it's a mess, but it's going to be a lovely mess. The 2026 World Cup, by the way, is the United bid. That is because it is being shared by Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Uh, it will also be the first time that the World Cup will have 48 teams, uh, again, because money. So, 
Uh, these are the different regions with the different allocations. Uh, we're going to talk later kind of about how that process works uh, for each region to decide who they are sending to the World Cup. If, by the way, you're looking at some of these where you see the .5, uh, that's because there are some playoffs so that uh, whoever barely gets in, you know, like North America's .5 is going to play against Oceania's .5 uh, in a playoff. Okay, so let's talk about the six regions of FIFA. And by the way, don't ask me what those abbreviations on the left mean. I'm not really sure anybody knows exactly. Within each of these six regions, you can basically think there's three different kinds of competitions. There's World Cup qualifying, which takes about a year to work out, and they all handle it in different ways. These things change often. Uh, it's confusing, but just understand that there's a process to decide each region sending teams to the World Cup. There's also within each one a nation's championship, so France versus Germany or Brazil versus Argentina, etc. Uh, these usually happen every two or four years. There's also a qualifying process to get into this. And then finally, within each region, there is a club championship, which happens each year is usually called the Champions League for that region. Uh, it involves the champions of each domestic league, plus maybe the domestic cup winners, etc. I said here because, again, this gets super confusing as to how many teams each country gets to send, etc., etc. Okay, so let's start with UEFA, because if you're watching this video, it is Europe that you're most familiar with, and UEFA is the Union of European Football Associations. There's their fabulous logo. So yes, they have their nation's championship. It is called the UEFA European Championships. Everybody just calls it the Euros. Um, it is most often won by Germany and Spain, but currently Portugal are the winners as of 2016. The 2020 competition was put off until 2021 because of COVID. Now, UEFA has also created a secondary national championships uh, called the Nations League. Uh, this was ostensibly a way so that the international competition, when they're not trying to get into the World Cup or the Euros, would somehow mean something. So they created this complicated thing of multiple groups and with promotion and relegation. It happens every two years. Um, Portugal won it in 2019. Uh, I guess it's going to happen again in 2021. I'm not sure anybody really cares. It's really just a way for UEFA to make more money. Their club championship in UEFA is, of course, the Champions League, the UEFA Champions League, currently held by Bayern Munich, uh, most often won by Real Madrid. They also have a secondary club championship, again, because there's just no such thing as too much f football or too much money. So the Europa League is where, for example, in England, the fifth and sixth place teams tend to go to the Europa League when the top four go to the Champions League. So the Europa League is just another European club championship, but it's kind of the number two club championship. Okay, I just want to briefly say that within each country, uh, you typically have leagues uh, connected by promotion and relegation, and then you have cups, domestic cups, which really are just tournaments that are open to pretty much everybody in the country. The details of this vary from one country to another. But just as an example, this is the so-called pyramid of leagues within England, Premier League on top, next three levels are Football League. Uh, you can see a video here all about the leagues and cups within England. Just wanted to tell you that this kind of a system exists within every country all over the world. And just as an example, each of these represents a club in the top six tiers of that pyramid in England. Uh, there are a lot of football clubs all over the world. Okay, now we're going to go on a little tour of the FIFA regions and just tell you briefly about the competitions within each one. Uh, we're going to start down here on the right in the Oceania. I honestly don't know how to say that word, but we're starting down here. Uh, as you can see, a tiny little region uh, that Australia used to be part of this, but they recently bolted for Asia, I guess, because they would rather play against South Korea than Papua New Guinea. Uh, here's the 
Oceania logo. Uh, so they have uh, their Nations Cup, as they call it, uh, that is usually won by New Zealand, uh, who also usually qualifies for the World Cup from there. Um, and then uh, they also have a Champions League. Uh, and to give you an idea of the level of football in this part of the world, Auckland City of New Zealand has won their Champions League seven times, and this is the home ground of Auckland City. So let's just say that New Zealand dominates football down there, but that ain't saying much. Next, we're going to go to Comnebol, which is, of course, South America. Within South America, their nationals, uh, nation's championship is called the Copa America, uh, which actually involves all 10 of their countries, and they always invite a couple of others. So the United States, Mexico, some other countries uh, have uh, gotten to play in the Copa America. And uh, it is actually the oldest international competition in the world. It goes back to 1916, usually won by Uruguay, Argentina, or Brazil. So the club championship within South America is called the Copa Libertadores, which I'm sure is a terrible Spanish pronunciation by me. It's basically named for the people who helped to liberate the South American countries from the European colonial powers. Uh, this uh, is usually won by someone from Argentina. Four of the top five clubs are from there. However, seven different Brazilian clubs have won it at least twice. And I'm going to tell you that if there's one club competition in the world that you want to pay attention to outside of Europe, it's the Copa Libertadores. Uh, the passion down there is second to none, and they have had some memorable finals recently between teams from both from Buenos Aires and uh, most recently both were from Brazil. So this is a big, big deal. Great competition. Okay, let's go up to CONCACAF, also known as North America. Here's their fabulous logo. Now, within CONCACAF, there is a nation's championship called the Gold Cup. It happens every two years, and uh, most often it looks like this, with Mexico lifting the Gold Cup. They've won it eight times, uh, but hey, us Americans get in there occasionally and win it. Uh, we've won it six times. Now, in CONCACAF, they've also created a nation's league because, again, money uh, this was started in 2018, and honestly, even though I am American, I did not even realize that this thing existed, although apparently uh, we're in the final four. Uh, this uh, was supposed to be played out in the summer of 2020. Uh, it will, I guess, happen in 2021, and I need to get with it because apparently, hashtag the dream is now. So CONCACAF also has a Champions League, of course, uh, apparently sponsored by someone named Scotiabank. Uh, this happens uh, every year and is almost always won by a team from Mexico. Five of the top six clubs on the all-time list are from Mexico. Uh, it has only been won twice uh, by someone from the United States. Okay, let's go off to Africa where they have, first of all, the African Cup of Nations that happens every two years. The most common champions being Egypt, Cameroon, Ghana, and Nigeria. They also have an interesting uh, competition called the African Nations Championship, which is only for players who play in African leagues. So that's kind of an interesting twist that they have to try to promote uh, players who stay at home in Africa. There's also, of course, an African Champions League, most commonly won by two different teams in Cairo who both share this stadium. They are called El Ali and Zamalek. <laughs> the number three team in that competition is from Tunisia. And the last stop on our FIFA World Tour is Asia, where every four years they have the Asian Cup, most often won by Japan, with four titles, followed by Saudi Arabia, Iran, and South Korea. Uh, Australia, of course, uh, switched here from Oceania. <laughs> uh, and in their three shots at the Asian Cup, they've made the quarterfinals once, the semifinals once, and they won the thing once. So Australia doing well in Asia. I do want to tell you briefly that this was the plane the Japanese national team took to the World Cup in 2018. Samurai Blue. <laughs> The Asian Football Confederation also has, of course, a Champions League. Uh, the same four countries that usually win the Asian Cup uh, usually have clubs that win the Champions League. This is the home stadium of the team in Saudi Arabia that has won it the most of all. Those folks in the Middle East can seriously build a stadium. 
And finally, let's talk about the FIFA Club World Cup, which you've probably heard of, uh, mainly because a European team almost always wins it. However, it's always played in Asia, so it's kind of in the middle of the night if you live in the U.S., or Europe, and frankly, uh, most of the world doesn't really seem to care about the FIFA Club World Cup. Basically, it's the winners of all of the various Champions Leagues. So this is the group that went into the 2020 Club World Cup, and uh, it's also joined by the champion of the host country, which is almost always in Asia. You probably did not know that Bayern Munich are the winners of this as well. Uh, and uh, in fact, you probably barely even know anything about the Club World Cup. But that's not going to stop FIFA from expanding it from eight teams to 32 teams because money. All right, I hope you enjoyed your FIFA World Tour and a little bit more about the structure of international football. Again, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments area down below. Please consider subscribing to us uh, here at Groundhopper Soccer Guides, and uh, we will see you at the grounds.